Hi there, Carrie here. And if this is on YouTube, please um, subscribe. It will help me build the channel. And I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I'm learning. So, and I'm brave enough to say, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And there's power in that because we can't get to the next step until we admit the step we're on. And well, that's the step I'm on. So, hey, I've pissed off a lot of people lately. So I figured I might as well just continue. I'm on a roll. And it'll be a great way to say goodbye to 2023. So, reporters who use scopists. I am so tired of hearing from scopists that, you know, they have a page rate for an expected quality of work from reporters. And sometimes, yeah, we have bad jobs. We have crappy jobs. We have easy jobs. We have jobs where it's like, I don't know. It's like I wash my hands and I don't know what to do with them or voice translate that in your head. I'm talking to everybody. <sighs> I saw a post recently and it was somebody asking to find a scopist who would work with them. And the post actually said, you know, I'm, I'm not going to tell you what method they are. Um, but sometimes my work is just a hot mess. And they were looking for a scopist. Now, I don't know of a scopist in their right mind who would have responded to that, although it was honest. But let's be real. If somebody said to you as a reporter, hey, I got a job tomorrow. And well, I got a couple of them. One of them is some attorneys you've worked with before on a case that you're familiar with. And the other one is a hot mess. But it pays the same. Which one would you pick? It's like, I'm not an idiot. I know which one I would pick. So what's the point here? The point is that I keep hearing, and it's not any of my business, except that I love this business. So it is kind of my business. But I keep hearing from scopists who say, I don't know what to do. I just got a job from a reporter and um, it started off being 100 pages and by the time I added all the words in and the speakers and the stuff that wasn't in the transcript that I re received initially it wound up being 125 pages I don't know what to do um, and you can charge for that 125 pages of course but that doesn't compensate you for the extra time and effort you went through backing up, backing up, backing up, backing up, trying to fill in the words that the reporter didn't get the first time around. We've all had those kind of jobs. What I'm saying to you as reporters is own it. Um, if your scopus charges a flat um, growth fee onto your transcript, or if they charge more per page, uh, for the whole transcript, you know, whatever they're charging you to give you the product that you're asking for, thank them, pay them, and I don't know, give them a heads up ahead of time, or um, I mean, you know, seriously, I've got, at one point, I had five scopists I was working with. I'm now down to two full-time and one backup part-time, but... <laughs> I always, always try to give them a heads up. This was like, you know how I told you that that last job was the worst job I've ever done? I was wrong because this one is. Um, they're out of control. I tried, you know, reining them in. I admonished them repeatedly, but it's a video and we're going to have to have it verbatim. And I, I hate giving it to you this way as much as you're going to hate working on it. And I'm so sorry. Charge me accordingly. Now, all you guys live in different geographical areas. So this is different across the board. The way I was raised in old court reporting um, mentorship was that your typist gets about one third of what you're billing. So if you're billing $3 per page for the originals back in the olden days, I don't know, then the Scopus is getting a dollar a page. And we didn't talk about copies because sometimes that wasn't an issue. And if you're working in court, which I'm sorry, I think it's harder work than deposition reporting, but this, the rates are less. I mean, in California, they're legislated and they're less than if you're freelance. 
But then again, they get salaries and bonus and, um, you know, um, time off and vacations and retirement and all the stuff that freelance people don't get. So in that sense, I guess it averages out. But you got to consider your scopist because the purpose of the scopist, well, there are a lot of purposes. Um, it could be proofreading only, could be scoping and proofing, could be just scoping. I mean, there's all kinds of variables, but the bottom line is, can we all wake up in the morning and approach the job in a sense that I have to, my goal is to write this job the best I possibly can so that when I turn it over to whoever's next, Scopus, proofreader, combination of both, that I'm giving them the best product possible to start with because their job is not to make up for the part of the job that I didn't do today. My job is not to give them a hot mess and only expect to pay them as if I had given them a really decent clean job because that's what their rates are predicated on, not cleaning up your hot mess. That's you, that's on you. And everybody has those days. It's not a slam to you as a reporter. It's just that if you're not a top-notch reporter, if you're not getting percentages of untranslates that are one or 2% or below, then you're asking your next step, your scopist or proofreader to make up for your deficiencies. And that's not fair. You're asking somebody to, to, yeah, to make up for what you're not doing as you're part of the job. And that may mean you need to be better. You need to be faster. You need to work harder. You need to research more. You need to be on top of, what did they just mark? What did they say? Oh, I guess I need to go find that, find that quote. I do that for my scopus when I can, or like yesterday I was doing a job and the attorney was lost, frankly. And the doctor started reading from something. And then I realized, because I'm looking on the screen, I realized, oh, they're reading from exhibit number three. And I made a note really quick for my poor scopist. So they don't have to sit there for an hour trying to figure out what did they say when they could just go look at exhibit three, because that's what they said. It's that little bit that makes a huge difference to a scopist who's, you know, you want them to lose, you know, two hours of work time looking for an exhibit that you know what they're looking at because you can see it. And then later in the transcript, they start talking about, oh, yeah, when we were referring to exhibit three, well, my scope is going to be pissed at me if by the time he gets to the end of the, the transcript and then they're mentioning it was exhibit three when I could have told him it was exhibit three back on page 15. And I did. And that's just that extra being aware, being awake, doing your job. Um, and if you are, mm, I don't know how to put this. If you are so lacking in your skills that your poor scopist is doing half of your job, well, then split it with them. Either get better at what you're doing or split it with them. If you're making $4 a page, but... I don't know, that was just out of the blue, but they are basically filling in half of the words that you're missing. First of all, I'd be terrified because they're going to ask me to read back in any moment. And what if I don't have it? And I don't know what people do out there, but well, I have seen, I have seen and heard horror stories of people using their audio for read back. Why are you doing that? Because if you're only as good as the audio that you play back for readback, then why wouldn't they just get a digital reporter or somebody who just records it all? Why do they want you? You can't even read back your own shit. So, okay, that was that, was that round. Um, but if you're going to ask a scopist or a proofreader to basically make up for 50% of your work that you're not doing as a certified reporter, then pay them that 50%. Just call it good. You know, if that's how you can make up for your deficiencies, okay, make it up somehow. Get better, get faster, get tighter, hone your craft, um, but don't expect somebody else to make up for what you're not doing. 
Um, and I really would love to do a little panel of scopists so that you guys can um, get some feedback on what it's like from their perspective and then to not get paid. Or I love this, to get some work from a reporter, to fill in all the missing words, to paragraph because it's frankly necessary, and then to have the reporter say, um, well, I just went through the first couple of your pages and it was just, it was horrible. There were so many mistakes. It's like, really? You know, have you looked at your own work lately? Um, a lot of them aren't reporters, yes, but a lot of them have trained as reporters and have gone to scoping schools and are certified um, and are used to working with a lot of different kinds of reporters. And so just because your work appears that way to them, I mean, I'd much rather have a conversation that goes like, gosh, I don't understand why you did this or how you missed that. Um, can, we, can we work on this together so we have a good working relationship? I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I, am, I feel like I'm so fortunate to have the 2.5 scopists that I have now, but I have worked with every single one of them since at least 2010. And before that, it was a crapshoot. It was working with a whole lot of, of scopists. And for some of them, uh, you know, I would give them, always give them a small job at first. So you can see what kind of work they do, what kind of stuff they focus on how fast they get it back to you, what their attitude is in working with you, um, and feel if you've got the potential of having a good working relationship, something that'll ebb and flow, and you forgive you, each of you for um, inconsistencies and errors because you're human. Uh, to this day, um, when I get something that comes back from a company that says, hey, there's an error here, um, I let my scopist know, but I always preface it with, this is not a complaint. I'm just keeping you in the loop because these are the things that they're finding that I missed that you missed. We all missed it. So, you know, just letting you know. Um, and they all are like ridiculously apologetic, but they don't have to be. I'm just trying literally to keep them in the loop. And it's usually something really simple. Something that was missed on the caption that's like that's my fault, even though the the notice may be attached. Um, but well, I don't know. I guess I, my my train went down a different track there. But please be honest with yourself about the level of your skills. Um, if you're working on a new certification, cool, because you're trying, you're pushing, you're trying to become better at what you do. Um, just don't be that reporter that gets out of school and within a month or two tries to find a scopist and you don't know how to make a transcript yet. You don't know what you don't know yet. Um, and you're trying to pay somebody else, hopefully if you pay them, trying to pay somebody else to make up for what you're not getting. You need to be getting it. You need to have your whole um, transcript and your license and everything just depend on you and your skills. I would say at least for six months, at least. You got to know how to make a transcript. You got to know the hard work it takes to put, put that stuff together, to have to do the research, to try to figure out what they're saying, to try to figure out what is that word and realize, oh, that is a word and it has a meaning. And how the hell did I miss that um, in however many years I've been on the planet? Because there are words to this day and every once in a while I'm like, I don't know what that is. I absolutely don't know what that is. And with the invent of the phone, um, I can Google my voice and it will sometimes give me the word. And then I sit there and I want to own it. I want to understand it. And I want to know, yeah, I don't want to blame myself because I didn't figure out what it was soon enough. But uh, that's not ever going to happen again. And you can only write as fast as you can hear and understand. And every time you hear something you've never heard before, you're going to hesitate. It's going to slow you down. It's going to stop you sometimes in your tracks. So I don't know. That's another video. But you guys, those of you using scopists and proofreaders, please be kind. They have got a really hard job. Um, and ideally, 
we need to, when you're asking, I mean, I have an ebb and flow. And so my scopists are always ready for the next job. But if it's something different, you know, I'm going to like corral them all up and tell them, hey, I got this coming up or I took this today. And, you know, I got one scopist who uh, loves, she lives on dailies on let's get it out tonight, you know, because we, we need to charge double. And the other full-time scopist doesn't want to do that stuff. I'm, he's worked for a long time and it's like, meh, I want my weekends. I don't want to be doing your expedite on a weekend. And that's okay. He's phenomenal at research. The other one hasn't been working as long, isn't quite as phenomenal at research, but they're both exquisite in their own way. But I'm going to tell them what I took today, how many pages it is, when it's due, and I'm going to get it to them within 12 to 24 hours, period. And that 12 to 24 hours is also me going back through that transcript. I'm pulling out the things that I want to incorporate into my dictionary forevermore, amen. Because I'm not going to trust my scopus to do that. Some of them read notes beautifully. Some of them don't. Some of them understand what how my brain thinks and what it wants in the dictionary, and some of them don't. So that's your job too. Your job is to build your dictionary. Your job is to comb through a transcript and figure out what you can fix by putting it in your dictionary or getting a concept in your head of how to write next time that will make your job easier, better, and more accurate and isn't that all what we, isn't that what we all want? So enough of my rant for today. I do love you guys all, even though I know sometimes what I, what comes out of my mouth sounds like really, you know, tough love or bullshit or um, what rant is she on today? I don't know. I hear it from both sides. I hear it from scopists. I hear it who are having trouble with reporters. I hear it from reporters who are having trouble with scopists. Can't we all just get along? Use whatever method we have. Use each other as a support and a backup and get out into the field the best product that we possibly can. Because if we don't do that, some form of some company somewhere who thinks they can do it better because they don't even understand what we do is going to snow the attorneys and they're not going to understand that we are the gold standard that having a human being on top of that transcript is the gold standard, period. That's all I got to say. I love you guys. Take care.